and you bring all the expertise and intelligence of the Senate Committee on Intelligence. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Senator Collins, uh, Senator Landrieu. <clears throat> I look at this as quite a banner day. I look at it as finally the Senate is coming together, that we are settling on one bill. Uh, this is the bill. And uh, if it needs improving, we'll improve it. Right. But we have a focus now, and with a focus, we can hopefully uh, move forward. Uh, I want to thank you for your hard work, for the dozen hearings you've held, and for all the offers for consultation uh, that you have placed out there to us. Uh, let me speak for a moment on behalf of what I do in the Intelligence Committee. We have examined cyber threats to our national and economic security. And just last month at the Worldwide Threat Hearing, which is an open hearing, uh, we heard FBI Director Bob Mueller testify that the cyber threat, which cuts across all programs, will be the number one threat to the country. And already, cyber threats are doing great damage to the United States, and the trend is getting worse. Let me give you just four examples. And what's interesting is we know about these when they happen, but they are often classified because the people that they happen to don't want it released because their clients um, will think badly of them. And, of course, it's not their fault. But nonetheless, I think it's fair to say that Pentagon networks are being probed thousands of times daily. And its classified military computer networks have suffered a significant compromise in 2008. And that's according to former Deputy Defense Secretary Bill Lynn. In November 2009, DOJ charged seven defendants from Estonia, Russia, and Moldova with hacking into the Royal Bank of Scotland and stealing $9 million from more than 2,100 ATMs in 200 and cities worldwide in 12 hours. In 2009, federal officials indicted three men for stealing data from more than 130 million credit cards by hacking into five major companies' computer systems, including 7-Eleven, Heartland Payment Systems, and the Hannaford Brothers supermarket chain. Finally, an unclassified report by the intelligence community in November 2011 said cyber intrusions against United States companies cost untold billions of dollars annually. And that report named China and Russia as aggressive and persistent cyber thieves. Modern warfare is already employing cyber attacks, as seen in Estonia and Georgia. And unfortunately, it may only be a matter of time before we see cyber attacks that can cause catastrophic loss of life, whether by terrorists or state adversaries. Our enemies are constantly on the offensive. And in the cyber domain, it is much harder for us to play defense when it, than it is for them to attack. The hard question is, what do we do about this dangerous and growing cyber threat? I believe the comprehensive bill that has been induced, introduced, the Cybersecurity Act of 2012, is an essential part of this answer. I'd like to speak briefly on the cybersecurity information sharing bill that I introduced on Monday and that you have included in Title VII in your legislation. The goal of this bill is to improve the ability of the private sector and the government to share information on cyber threats that both sides need to improve their defenses. However, a combination of existing law, the threat of litigation, and standard business practices has presented or deterred private sector companies from sharing information about the cyber threats they face and the losses of information and money they suffer. We need to change that through better information sharing in a way that companies will use that protects privacy interests and that takes advantage of classified information without putting that information at risk. So here's what we have tried to do 
in Title VII. One, affirmatively provide private sector companies the authority to monitor and protect the information on their own computer networks. Two, encourage private companies to share information about cyber threats with each other by providing a good faith defense against lawsuits for sharing or using that information to protect themselves. Three, require the federal government to designate a single focal point for cybersecurity information sharing. We refer to this as a cybersecurity exchange to serve as a hub for, for appropriately distributing and exchanging cyber threat information between the private sector and the government. This is intended to reduce government bureaucracy and make the government a more effective partner in the private sector, but with protections to ensure that private information is not misused. This legislation provides no new authority for government surveillance. Fourth, we establish procedures for the government to share classified cybersecurity threat information with private companies that can effectively use and protect that information. This, we believe, is a prudent way to take advantage of information that the intelligence community acquires without putting our sources and methods at risk or turning private cybersecurity over to our intelligence apparatus. I'd like to raise just one issue of something that is not yet included in this bill, and that's data breach notification. This is an issue I've worked on for over eight years since California had a huge data breach that we only inadvertently found out about that had liter literally hundreds of thousands of data breaches. Um, it's an urgent need. Uh, I have a bill, it's called the Data Breach Notification Act. Uh, it's come out of the Judiciary Committee and it accomplishes what in my view are the key goals of any data breach, breach notification legislation. One, notice to individuals who will better be able to protect themselves from identity theft. Two, notice to law enforcement, which can connect the dots between breaches and cyber attacks. And three, pre, and this is important, preemption of the 47 different state and territorial standards on this issue. This is a real problem. We have 47 different laws in this country. It makes it very difficult for the private sector. Companies uh, will not be subjected to conflicting re regulation if there is one basic standard across the country. I know that Senators Rockefeller and Pryor have a bill in the Commerce Committee and that Senators Leahy and Blumenthal have their own bills that also were reported out of the Judiciary Committee. But the differences in our approaches are not so great that we can't work them out. And I'm very prepared to sit down with members of this committee, with Senator Rockefeller and others, to find a common solution. But I would really implore you to add a data breach preemption across the United States so that there is one standard for notification to an individual of data breach, of communication with law enforcement uh, that goes all across America. Uh, until we have that, we really won't have a sound data breach system. Let me just thank you. Um, I think we're on our way. Uh, I'm, I'm really so proud of both of you in this committee uh, for coming together, and I think it's a banner day. So thank you very much. Th thanks uh, very much, Senator Feinstein. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks for your testimony. And uh, I'm personally uh, very uh, supportive of your aims with the uh, data breach uh, proposal. And uh, I, I look forward to working with you and, as you say, the others who have bills to see if we can find a, a, a way to include that uh, in this uh, proposal when it comes to the floor. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much.